Welcome back everybody to another week. This week we have the 2024 Volvo V60 Polestar engineered. It is the only wagon that's kind of keeping things alive in the hybrid, you know, kind of era. And it's really, really cool. Like it's got 455 horsepower. It is hybrid. It's a plug-in hybrid actually, not just a normal hybrid. Um, it looks really good in this gray color. You got those yellow kind of brake calipers here that look fantastic. You know, we also have a charge port right here, which is very nice. So I can plug that in when I get home. Back looks very nice. Now the last Volvo I had was an XC60 recharge and I absolutely loved it. So I imagine, well, I already can tell you that the V60 is no different. I absolutely love it. It is fantastic. Very, very good so far. And yeah, it's kind of a bullet, kind of a bullet for a plug-in. The battery is actually dead right now, so I can't really show you what that does. I don't really know. Um, I picked it up and it was a little bit of charge left and then I kind of used it on the way home. So let's hop in though. I'll give you my first impressions and then throughout the week as I was, as I'm able to charge the battery, we'll, uh, we'll show you what that is like as well. So let's hop in quick here. Car is already on. Very, it's low to the ground. We are pretty low, but everything's high quality because you know, we're Volvo. So you can see here. This is new to me. I can watch my YouTube videos in here. Watch, go and watch this one right now if you're <laughs> watching. I was just dancing it while I was filming, but yeah, really cool. So let me mount you up and we'll take it first. Day. Okay, so now we are driving the Polestar 60. First impressions here on the road. I have it in pure because I actually, my GoPro died. So I decided, okay, we'll just go home. We'll give it a little bit of charge with the little wall outlet that I have. I, I think I left it there for like three hours. I got 15 kilometers. So not very fast, obviously, from a drip charge kind of system that we have just via the cable, you know, but I can go charge it fully later on during the week if I need to. But if I left it there until three, a.m. I would have had a full charge which is decent enough like if you don't want to invest in having like a, a a charger or anything like that then that's pretty good so you know now I'm I believe I'm fully in electric mode I don't think the engine is on I think I'm fully yeah this is purely in EV mode wow okay you think it would kick the engine on at some point, but it didn't. So I'm assuming it just uses the electric battery until it can no longer do it. Um, and then if I turn it into hybrid, let's see. Now will you kick the engine on? Nope, still doesn't. I'm still in EV, I can't even hear the engine. Or it's so smooth that I can't even feel it, but I, I don't think so. I think, uh, always start in pure, okay, so it's always gonna do that. Oh, I can tell it to charge. Oh, interesting. I'm learning this as we go. So there you go. You know, but anyways, so speed 455 horsepower, it's a rocket. Um, I can feel that it's a rocket, just even just in EV mode, it's got quite a good good kick, which tells me that the battery delivery is very good. Um, I have like the firm steering on because I do like a firm steering wheel. Am I getting that much feedback from it? Not really. Do I feel like I could bolt this thing around on a track? Probably not. Would I ever want to? Absolutely not. This is just like a good street warrior. I mean, that's the cool thing. Like, I don't have a crazy exhaust. I don't have a crazy engine, nothing like that. But I am quite quick. And when I do get up to speed, when I do press on the gas, nobody knows I'm doing it. You know, you can't really hear the engine fire up, especially when I'm purely driving in EV mode like I am now. And it's just really cool. I will say though, ride quality is like on the bouncy side, like really, especially when I'm in like the Polestar mode, I am very like, I'm very bouncy on these bad roads. Um, it's not uncomfortable though. Like I don't, I don't hate it. I don't really care. Um, but yeah, it is a little bit more of a rigid suspension than I was expecting. You know, it's like a bit more like bump, 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 bump around, but still it's really fast. <laughs> so it kind of makes up for it. If it was slow and bumpy, that it would just be like, there's no point, but it's fast and bumpy. So I'll take it. I can hear it's like little EV noises that it's making too. When I do it, if I pop it into Polestar mode. Now the engine is on for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. It's actually a bit more of a delay than I was expecting to actually turn the engine on, which is interesting. Cause now I think it's off again. Maybe not. I think it always keeps it on. Polestar engineer mode optimizes acceleration and gear shift response for a sportier, more, more dynamic driving experience. Okay. 
I started with 15, I'm currently at 13, and I didn't do much driving. So it has been using the battery probably primarily, I believe. Feels like it anyways, but the engine is definitely on, I can hear it. Okay, let's uh, pump my brakes, let's give it a little rip here. Oh yeah, whoa, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so okay, so that's kind of funny because it's like, EV power, and then the engine goes on, it's like, oh, ooh, and then you kind of just fly. That's kind of fun. Let me do that again. EV power, there comes the engine. <laughs> Once the engine comes on, you're really, it's fun. You get the instant off the line torque from your EV battery if, if you have charge. If not, you're just going to get the engine. And then once the engine kicks in, you, you know, it kind of brings you the rest of the way because I think the, the, you can really tell that the EV battery stops pushing at a certain point. At like, I don't know, like if I'm going 40. If I hit 60, then it starts to kind of cap and then, and then the engine really has to kick in to carry me the rest of the way. But it's perfectly fast and kind of fun to drive. I mean, like I said, there's no sound to it, so I don't really, it's not really an ambiance to it. It's, it really does feel more like an EV launch than anything, but still, that's fun. That's really fun. So I'll pick it back up during the week. I'll show you the interior, exterior, walk arounds, every little feature I find with it, every little weird thing that I find with it. I'll show you absolutely everything, and you can know what it's like to live with the, with the Volvo V60 Polestar. Let's start with the week. All right, as promised, here we are outside again. Volvo V60. Ooh, very nice in this, like, you know, classic. We're in Quebec. If, if there's nothing... If you doubt I'm ever filming in Quebec, right there is your proof because they follow me everywhere. It's just comical at this point. So <laughs> look at this. So look how nice this side profile looks and like this low light. There's not a lot of sun out. There's a plane flying over us, um, <laughs> but there's not a lot of sun out. So it looks really, really good. And I'm like right by a boat launch right here, which is obviously not occupied right now because boats are not on the road. I mean, on the water, of course, not on the road. Um, but yeah, so I kind of have this free space where I can shoot some cool stuff in, which I like to do. So check this out, Volvo V60. And uh, yeah, you know, like we're in a nice little setting. So let me actually show you some of what the interior has got in store. Let's hop in quick. Right, so interior wise, we have, you know, not a lot of different colors, but still quality, right? So I've got some memory seats here, Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which sounds fantastic. You know, I've got like the Volvo thing, it's dirty, obviously I'm standing in the mud. Um, and then I have these nice yellow seatbelts that stand out so well on camera, fantastic. I love that touch. Let's hop in here, bite my feet off. Alrighty, so once we're in, we're greeted by a very nice Volvo steering wheel. Um, it's exactly like the recharge one. I'm sure it's exactly like most of them. I don't think Volvo changed it too much. Um, not very a descriptive bunch. So like this is my media controls here and also for the menu there as well. I can control and then I have two mem I have two menu settings. It's either the map or no map. Which one do you want? And that's it. So <laughs> I haven't figured out, or at least yet in the week, I haven't figured it out how to. If I do, I'll let you know, but I don't think I don't think it changes. Um, and then I have like whether I'm charging or powering stuff like that. And then I have my speed on the left. And then I also have a heads up display, which yes, you can see because of the nice water. Look at this view that I give you when we film. Then we have the gas. I mean, this is going to open the gas cap because we do have gas in it still. And then we have the automatic tailgate button. Very nice. Nice Bowers and Wilkins speaker up there as well. And then we have the Google controlled infotainment that I was talking about. Uh, you know, you can see we have Google Maps built in, Sirius XM radio, of course. And we also have like YouTube, which I can go on. Very nice. Owner's manual is here too. And we have this nice air quality thing, which will tell us what it, or if the air quality is good in the car. Then the thing that annoys me is like all the HVAC controls. Well, not all. There's two down here that I could use, but that's it. Everything else is right up here in here. I don't hate it really um, just because of the fact that like it works and it's worked flawlessly so far. But I have a feeling that some people might just prefer buttons. I also have 360 degree camera here that I could use. I've got heated seats, uh, three levels of heated seats, three levels of heated steering. I don't think there is any kind of ventilation. La, 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 la. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. But yeah, so heated seats is fine. That's good enough. But I don't know, for like 77,000 something, as that's a price, uh, it would be nice to have some ventilation, honestly. But very simple though, very, very simple. Uh, I don't, I don't hate it. It's completely fine. And then you have like these nice, this volume knob feels very premium too. I can skip tracks and stuff. Then we have this nice like glass shifter that we saw in the Volvo XC60 
a recharge we see on this one we'll probably see a lot a lot more two cup holders the start stop which is a very interesting thing you know pretty standard stuff i got like a little bit of storage here like i always wonder like does this come out and then i have more storage i doubt it yeah no it doesn't it's not going to come out because this is blocking it so yeah that's about as much uh storage you get there but you do have a pretty good amount in the glove box so it kind of makes up for it there no big deal this guy slides here really like the look of the seats again we have the swedish flag right here you can get a good view of our sunroof too which is controlled by some touch controls up there yeah it's very solid i think this is more like more like a you know it's, it's not a crazy interesting interior but i don't know i'm a fan of it i think it's very premium maybe minimalistic is premium who knows anyways that is the interior quickly for the v60 i will show you more if i find it and we'll continue the route so I'm driving along here. There's nobody on this road. Nobody's going to come down here. Um, you can see I have my 360 just because I was turning around in a narrow space. I like how pretty detailed the 360 is and also how absolutely silent this car is when you keep it like really low speed. Like I try not to splash it. I'm trying to get the car dirty in the puddle. So I'm going slow on purpose, but like it's so quiet. Like you don't hear anything. Listen. I almost can't even hear the tires. It's so nice. That's really nice. I like how quiet it is. It's very simple. Okay, so we're in a relatively silent car because the car is on, but since there's no engine needed right now and this can do quite a bit of speed on just its electric motor, we don't need anything. And I believe the car starts in full EV mode, so um yeah it's just gonna let me go here you can actually get it into b instead of d it's b and then i can fully stop with one pedal driving which makes driving this car that much easier and i love it you know if you've watched any of my videos you know i love a one pedal drive system and i use it every single time there's a lot of people that don't like it but i i really like it i like the way volvo does it i like the way that i can adjust my speed it gives the throttle a little bit of like a heavier feel too which i do enjoy and the steering is nice and that is a nice dodge charger and i did not know my neighbor has that maybe it's worth a knock on their door <laughs> hey this is just a note for anybody if you have a car or like a cool car it doesn't matter if it's new it doesn't have to be new if it's like in good shape and it runs it's not going to break down on me during a video let me know if you're in the montreal area or even the quebec area reach out let me know um i'm definitely willing to do a feature on them if you want to see them on like it would be on the prn channel um it's a much bigger channel it's your car would get even more eyeballs so there you go but yeah back to what this is so let's kind of play around with the drive modes here so um i have I went into sound. That's the that's the thing that sucked, and it sucked in the other Volvos too, where you have to like go into settings and go into driving, and then there you get your your drive mode. I feel like they have more than enough space here to put a drive mode selector, like on the wheel, maybe on my side here, like anywhere besides the infotainment. But anyways, that's where we're at. Um, so right now it's, it does start in pure, always start in pure drive mode. Okay, so if I go hybrid, let's see, I believe that might have. Nope, that still didn't kick on the engine. I was actually quite fast with the engine. I think the, the electric motor only does like 157 horsepower and the rest is all gas, something like that. Um, so it's cool. And then if I put it into Pulsar, will it kick the engine on? You know what? I can't even tell. It's so silent. I can never tell. Like now, you really got to get some speed to, to even hear the engine get kicked on. Why is pure grayed out? hybrid no i'm probably going too fast for pure wait you see i can't put it i can't put it back into pure for some reason now that's interesting hmm okay well, i'll leave it in hybrid because i'm still in electricity mode but yeah so 55 kilometers on a full charge can't hate on it i mean because that's pretty good you know i don't mind it I think that's cool. So what was also cool is I didn't film it, but last night I was able to go to like, you know, it was kind of cold, but I do like my Dairy Queen. I do like, you know, to treat oneself once in a while. So, you know, we head on over there and I could enjoy my ice cream inside my car with a bunch of napkins, of course, because I do not dirty the interiors of the cars that I own or, or even use. Um, yeah, so I was able to do that and watch YouTube while I was eating my stream. It was like being at home, nice and comfortable in my car seat. And I was able to watch a bunch of YouTube. It was just fantastic, so much fun. Like the last time I had that was in a Tesla. And I feel like 
there's other car manufacturers that have the ability to add like a YouTube app into their infotainment and just let people use it, but they just don't. And I feel like it's such a huge minus. But this is, since the infotainment is built mainly by Google, everything's handled by Google, so that makes sense. You know, YouTube is Google's platform, so there you go. But it's cool to be able to load up my own videos on here. I, I just love that feature, I think it's really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm still noticing the suspension being like more bumpy, especially on these crappy roads. Um, but the noise isolation is good. Like the, the sound dampening is really good in here. And the sound system is Bowers and Wilkins. It's up there with some of the best. It really is really, really fantastic. Like, oof, it's really, really solid and nice to hear. So yeah, that'll about, well, I mean, it was cool to kind of test the drive modes. I'm driving right now to film some stuff. It's like kind of, I like to kind of film when the, the sun's going down. It's better for like lighting and stuff. And also it's really good to show like the, the tail lights, the headlights and stuff like that. It really shines in this kind of condition. So I'm, that's actually what I'm on my way to do. So I figured let's film some in-car driving on the way to do that because uh, yeah, you guys need to experience these cars like I do as much as I do. So yeah, I'll try to show you this car at night. There's not much going on, but I'll try to show it to you when it's actually dark out and maybe I'll do like a little walk around again if it's, uh, you know, if the light goes down that much more later. So pick it back up in a little bit. All right, picking things back up at nighttime where I've got a quick ice cream here. Can't really see the illumination on the thing so much. So hang on, come on. There we go, turn that on. So I got the ice cream here. Not much in terms of like, I mean, there's some light in the footwells, but really where this excels is where you're just kind of sitting around, not doing much. And I can watch YouTube while I'm enjoying this because I can't drive and eat this at the same time. So I can watch YouTube. Shout out uh, Beard Meets Food. That's what it's called. Yeah, <laughs> I love watching this guy when I eat. It's just a weird thing, but yeah. Surprisingly, I don't watch that much car content when I'm in my car. But anyways. It's been very nice. I'm going to enjoy this and enjoy that guy and watch him eat disgusting food. And <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. We'll pick it up later. All right, back outside in the wind with the Volvo V60 Polestar engineered. And I want to kind of take some time to show you or kind of explain what the Polestar engineered means. Basically, it's a factory tune. That, that wind is just going crazy. Basically, Polestar engineered is a factory tune. So, so you can basically go on the Polestar engineered website and then put in your VIN number, your model and stuff like that. And they'll tell you whether or not they can enhance it for you. Basically, it's like a software enhancement. It also does some stuff, pulls some performance out of the engine and stuff. But specifically this one, since it already comes from the factory Polestar engineer, it's already like all the stuff is from the factory plus some hardware that, you know, most cars won't have. So here we go. Uh, we're going to try to take you through it. I got it on my phone right here. So I have Polestar engineered stiffer springs. That, that's definitely the case because this is a pretty stiff ride. I also have front Brembo brakes calipers in gold. It looks yellow to me, but I, I don't you know what. That's pretty gold. So there you go. We also have lower center of gravity, of course. And then we also are getting Polestar engineered front strut bar. So that's probably helping performance as well. And then we get the pull and then we get the unique bump stops and the 19 inch five spoke it says five dash Y spoked black polished forged alloy wheel, which is right there. So, so there you go. That that's kind of what you get when you do that. When you, when you buy the Polestar engineered, it's basically the tune comes right from the factory and it's just fantastic. I mean, those, this paint color with the brakes, I mean, you just can't go wrong. Can you? I mean, it's just too, too good to be real, too good to be true, but it is real and you can buy it for $77,000. So let me know. Do you think the upgrades that comes with this thing, you think it's enough? Would you buy it? And there's something interesting. I don't know if I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, that we have adaptive dampers, but it's not a button. It's actually a knob under the hood. So let's actually check out under the hood. I'm going to open it up from here. Like this you'll see how actually wide this hood can open as well. It's kind of ridiculous if I can do it with one hand. Yes, I can. So, I mean, the hood just absolutely bolts up there. But here you can see Polestar engineered. This is the Olin's dampers I was talking about. And you can see to reset the factory settings, see the owner's manual, great. Uh, but I guess I can turn these guys to either make it a little bit more loose or a little bit more firm, right or left. And then I have one on the left side, one on the right side. I can't do it. And I think this is only adjusting the front suspension. This isn't actually adjusting the rear suspension, which is super weird. Um, but you can also see the Volvo engine right here, which is very nice, good looking, nice big engine. Well, decently sized. I know it's not the biggest we've seen on the channel here. And then the battery system is somewhat there. It's one in the back, I believe. I can actually hear the battery running. The engine is like kind of 
I'm not really running at all. But yeah, so I can kind of play with these guys and then see what kind of ride we get. I, I, didn't, I don't really want to touch it because I don't want to screw it up for the next guy. So I just kind of left it. I'm assuming it's at factory because I don't think anybody else is. But look how much of a stretch I have to do to close this thing. It's crazy. But yeah, make sure your fingers don't get caught in that when you do that. Um, but yeah, it looks so good in the sun, this car with the color. Oh my goodness. Um, we're about done the week. So I'll give you kind of a final walk around too. I just wanted to show you what the dampers actually look like. Final walk around and then we'll hop in. I'll give you my final impressions either today or the next day. Um, and then yeah, we'll end off the week. Unfortunately, I do get an extra day with it, but I think I'm just going to enjoy it for that day. Um, I'm not probably not gonna film too much. I'm gonna edit all the footage because it's actually Easter. So the place is closed. So I cannot drop this car off right yet so i'll drop it off on tuesday and then we'll pick up our next new exciting car but let's hop in give my final impressions all righty so unfortunately we are approaching the end of the week with the volvo v60 polestar engineered uh, what a great time it has been to spend with this thing with yellow seat belts you know it really is the sleeper station wagon right like nobody like everybody that i've showed that you know obviously not a lot of people in my family are necessarily car people so you know the first impression is well it just looks like a family car it looks like something you pop the family in and and you go and you have a great time which i mean if you're saying that you'd be right because that that really isn't what it looks like I mean, it just looks like a you know an everyday uh, normal car all, all things considered but it's it's far from that it's uh <laughs> at least to me anyways or to the trained eye because it, it's got you know 445 horsepower crazy or 455 i don't know something like that it's it's insane and and it really does rip off a line it really is good with its battery i really am saving a lot of money because i have a plug-in hybrid system on board like and, and it's also all-wheel drive which is fantastic can't go wrong with all-wheel drive i don't know i feel like the station wagon look has not followed people like i don't feel like a lot of people that i've spoken to or show the car to like it but personally i do i like the way that it looks i like the way that like i said there's no trade-off between having not being a big you know fingerprint on the road and also having a lot of the same space that an suv affords those things are really nice to have and it's no joke like it's it's quick off the line in polestar mode it's quick off the line in general like i was in hybrid just there and it was a pretty quick little launch there where it doesn't really even need to kick in the engine it just it's just fast it's just really quick it handles quite well too around corners the ride quality is something to be i guess something to be desired because of the fact that you can adjust it like you know you can almost fine tune your own ride but it's not a quick switch it's not a hot swap you got to pop the hood and change the dampers in the front only to do it in the back I, I haven't even found a knob or anything i'm pretty sure i would have to jack up the car to really get at that suspension back there although i think you can do it um i think that's something you're going to do though if you're going to take this thing on the track which personally i'm probably not going to do everything's so nice and easy to use here too it's like it's very it's a very simple minimalistic interior and you know to some that's going to bother you to me i like it a lot i think it's very well designed i think there's no problems there at all i think you know just the, just the overall look of everything is just really really cool and the fact that like i've barely used my full tank of gas here like i think it was at 600 when i started the week it's now at 550 so like i'm literally not using any gas although i have been pushing it i've been driving it quite a bit um i, I really have been looking for every excuse to go out and drive this volvo i love the xc60 recharge i love the v60 polestar engineer and what's cool is like i said like i explained to you you can literally go onto you know the polestar engineer website and see if they can engineer your current volvo to see if they can pull some more performance out of that you're obviously going to pay but it doesn't void your warranty it's kind of like a it's kind of like a tune-up shop that doesn't get you in trouble especially if you're like you know you're leasing the car or whatever and you, you want to stay on warranty well the polestar engineered system is the way to do that and it's really cool and this just comes like that from the factory which i absolutely love really hasn't gotten old i don't think it will i don't think it would i i think i, I wonder from owners if anybody's owned this tell me this have you played with the adaptive suspension like do you are you able to adjust it does it work are you able to fine tune it like the way that you might want i mean, that's something that's very very interesting to me i want to know so let me know in the comments 
if you own this vehicle let me know also let us know reliability stuff like that because it's something i can't tell you reliability wise has been perfect for me all week um but yeah that's something i can't really touch on i don't know i haven't i haven't seen or heard of too many volvos like going wrong i've actually only seen volvos like lasting forever you know a couple of the people that i know that have owned volvos have lasted forever so if the v60 is built like those you should be good because $77,000, you don't want it to break in the first three or four years. It's definitely not what you want to have happen. So let's hope that we keep things intact and things stay the way they should be and need to be. So with that being said, I will go ahead and get out of here. That's got to do it for my week with the Volvo V60 Polestar Engineer. It's been great. It's been fun. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want more from it? Is it too expensive for you? I'm, I'm thinking yes for most people, but let me know. I want to hear what you think and let me know if there's any other shots, any other things that you would want to see uh, later on in different weeks or if there's any other kind of type of car, t car content you want to watch because I am here to bring these cars to you in the way that you want to watch them. So you got to let me know what you want to see. Make sure you subscribe for more. I'll see you the next week. See you the next car. Take care.